Okay, it's time to create our game. We're going to create a game that's probably the first one I ever played called Pong. First thing we want to do is edit the background. And um, what I want to do is put a red line across the bottom. And we need that later to sense. Just do that. Okay. And we don't need this sprite, so I'm going to right click and delete it. But we do need a couple of new sprites. One is going to be our paddle. And when you do this, you can experiment with different paddle sizes. And I'm going to call that paddle so I can keep track of it. And the other is going to be our ball. And maybe I'll create a tennis ball looking thing. All right, again, you can experiment with the size of it. I'm going to call that ball. And I'm going to put the ball where I want it to start and the paddle where I want it to start. And we're going to program the paddle first because that's the easiest and we just want it to go back and forth. I'm going to go on the paddle and what we want to do is we're going to need to start with the control when the flag is clipped, let's happen. And the paddle is always going to do the same thing, so we just need it forever. And you can see the motion path of the paddle if I go right and left is on the X. We don't want the Y to change, we want the X. So we want to set X and then we're going to use a sensing of set X to the same as mouse X. So wherever the mouse is, that's where the paddle should be. So let's see if that works. Yep. So even if I put my mouse up and down, it's not going to move, but it moves right and left just like I want. That's great. Okay, now we're going to do the program the ball. And that takes a little more programming because we need to think about three different things. The first thing is um, we need to get the ball uh, started. So we're going to do a one click. We want to always start it up here at around, looks like, negative 14, 143. So we want it to be, no, that's close enough, negative 10 and 144. Uh, we want to point it down. We need to point it direction. We want to go down. And then if it touches this red color, we want the game to stop because we've lost. So we're going to use a wait command. So wait until, and then we're going to use a sensing command. If the ball is touching, and we can use a paint dropper to pick that red up, then we're going to stop all. Let's see what happens. Okay, the next thing we need to do is decide what's going to happen when the ball hits the paddle. So we need to bring another control out for that. When clicked. And this time we're going to do it forever if a condition is there. And it's going to be as another sensing condition. And this time it's going to be if it's touching the paddle. And if it's in touching the paddle, we want to change the direction to point up. We want to move the ball, change that around to we'll say five. And the other thing we want to do is um, kind of have it turn a little bit on us, but we want to do that randomly. And there's some operators we can do. So let's say randomly between negative 20, oops, 20 and 20 degrees. All right, so that's what's going to happen when our ball touches the paddle. And our final operation is what happens if the ball hits the side. Uh, in this case, that's always going to be the same thing, no matter what side it hits. And there's actually a motion if on edge bounce. And again, we want it to move, let's say, 5. Okay, let's see what our code that does. There it drops, it hit my paddle, it's bouncing. Drops, hit the paddle, bouncing, and then whoop, it's game over. So you can make this game harder by changing the number of steps. Let's turn that off. Make it 10, and it's going to go faster. All right, so now we have it faster. Um, you can also experiment with the size of the ball, the size of the paddle, changing the degrees. Good luck!